I'd like to wrap up our lecture by talking about the idea or the concept of text variables and specifically I'm going to show you how to insert automatic page numbering. Before I do that though, I want to emphasize that I'm only showing you one example, but there are so many examples if you just play around with the type menu and you go through the symbols and the markers, quotation marks and other things like that, you'll see how many different variables um, will can be applied to your document. And if something like this interests you, it's covered in detail in the advanced InDesign class that we offer. But it's not something that you have to master in order to master InDesign, but it's something that makes your life a lot easier if you're doing something in an automated way, automatic way instead of doing it manually. And so at a very basic level, if you want to insert a variable, in our case we're going to do automatic page numbering, you will use a type menu. So your text cursor has to be blinking somewhere to add text. So make a text box, make sure your text cursor is blinking. And then in the type menu, if you come down to text variables or insert special character or any of the options towards the bottom of the panel, you can insert different things. For automatic page numbering, you're going to choose insert special character, a marker, which is like a counter, tell me where I'm at kind of thing. And then you're going to choose current page number. And then no matter what page that box or that text frame is on, it will only display the number of the page that it's on. So if you're working in a document and you create automatic page numbering and on page four you have a page number, but then you add 25 pages before page four, what used to be page four and is now page 29 will automatically update to say 29. You don't have to create automatic page numbers on a master page, but I highly recommend it. You really should be creating your automatic page numbering on a master page. So let's jump over to InDesign. So I have the document that we've been working on here, and what I'm going to do, um, just so I don't have to fix anything, is I'm going to delete pages 4 through 9, and then I'm going to create a bunch of new pages. So let's make a 16-page document. Okay, so I have a 16-page document, and I want to add automatic page numbering. So I want to first show you on an actual page. So I'm going to go to page one, double click on page one and navigate there. I'm going to create a text box and I'm going to have my text cursor blinking. And so you can see it on the video, I'm going to make the text really big, like 150 points. With the text cursor blinking, I could type a one for page one, but because we know that page shuffling occurs, if I drag and drop this and it becomes page seven, or it actually become page eight, no, it became page seven. If you double click on it, it still has a one because it's not a variable, it's just the number one. So let's undo that. If we go back and instead of typing a one, if you insert a variable, so go to the type menu, choose insert special character, markers and current page number, it will look the same. It looks like a one, but it's not a one, it's a variable. And so what InDesign is telling this box, is this text frame, is whatever page I'm on, put that page number. So if I copy this box, Command C, and I go down to page eight, and I paste it, it puts an eight there because it's not the number eight, it's a variable that says whatever page I am, put that number. And so, I'm gonna delete that. And so if I drag and drop page one and make it page seven, if we navigate to page seven, that one becomes a seven because it's a text variable. Now I want to show you why it's important to do this on a master page. So when you are when you're doing page numbers, sometimes you want them in the bottom right hand corner, sometimes you want them in the bottom left hand corner. Maybe you want it to overhang as part of your design element up here. Whatever your decision is, it tends to change, right? You look at it and you go, oh, that was a horrible idea. Why would I want my page numbering so big? Why would I want to use that typeface? Why would I use that position on the page? If I was working in a 16-page document and I decided to change the position of the page number, I would have to manually change that 16 times. However, if we do it on a master page, so let's go back to a master where I have my little red circle. If I add the page number inside the red circle, so before I do that, I want to center the artwork. So I'm going to center it horizontally using paragraph options and then vertically using object text frame options. And we'll center it. And I also want to make it bigger so it's easier to see. And we'll leave the, no, let's make white text. I think that'll be easier to see on the video. Okay, now that I have all my formatting settings, if you go to the type menu, insert special character, markers, and current page number, notice how it has an A, which I want to make this bigger anyway. 
and let's choose a new typeface. So let's use this one. It has a letter A because I'm on the A master. If I copy this and I paste it onto the C master, it will have a C on it. That's because it's a variable. It's not showing me the page number because there's no page number for a master page. However, every page that has master A applied to it will automatically have that page number. So let me put my chapter back to the first page. And then if I go to page two, it's page two and page three, page four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, etc. And a benefit of this is if I decide that I do not want the page number that big, and I come and I scale it and I make it smaller. As soon as I go to my pages, that change has been updated on the page. You can come back to the A master and you can change the position. Maybe I want it in the top right hand corner. And then it will automatically apply. Now before we leave this subject, I want to show you one last thing. So um, when, let's zoom in here. When you're doing page numbers, oftentimes, um, when you're designing a book or something like that, you want your page numbers to be in the bottom outside corner, like away from the spine or towards the spine, or you want it in the top outside corner. And you can't really do that easily unless you use two master pages, right? So I could edit the A master, and I could change it to be a two-page master. And then I could take that element, and I could put it in the bottom outside corner on the left master page and the bottom right hand corner on the right master page and then when I go to my actual pages you'll see that it will take an effect. But there's a better way to do that so I'm going to undo until I have one master page. So when you are, I'm going to cut this command X, when you are working with text and you use your paragraph panel options, so go to the window menu, choose type and tables and then paragraph. When you use your paragraph options, there are horizontal um, alignment options. You have align left, center right, and then you have your four justify options, which we've already talked about this semester. But the last two options are to align whatever the text is towards the spine or away from the spine. And so I want to show you what that means. So I've added text to this frame, and I'm going to choose to align it towards the spine. Now it's a one page master, but this master is applied to all the pages in the document. So if I go to pages two and three, you'll see that the text is appearing on both pages, but on the left hand side page, it moves towards the spine, and on the right hand side page, it also moves towards the spine, even though I only have a one page master. And so if you go back to the master page and you change the formatting of that text to align away from the spine, and then you go back to those pages, now it's aligning to the outside, which is what we usually want for master page numbers. And so you can change this instead of having it be words. You can go to the type menu, choose insert special character, markers, and current page number. And then let's make it bigger so you can see it. Apparently I made it too big. There we go. And so now if I go to the pages, it has a page number instead of words, but wherever page, whatever page I'm on, it aligns to the outside of the page. Another hack, another trick up your sleeve, is if you wanted the formatting to be that circle that we created, you can always paste shapes into a text frame. So I'm going to cut this, Command or Control X or Edit Cut if you like the, the menus. And then instead of typing in here, I'm just going to have my text cursor blinking and I'm going to choose Paste. And I can do that over and over again if I wanted to have lots of page numbers. Let's delete. And then, that will have the text formatting settings of a line away from the spine. And so now when I go to my pages, it will be the page number. And obviously I don't want so many of them, so I'll come in here and just delete the ones I don't want. But because I pasted the shape while the text cursor was blinking, I can now grab the text alignment options to make it apply to my cool shape that I made as my master page. And now the page numbering will align away from the spine. The only catch is that I have to make sure that the box that I put the text in goes as far as I want it to go. If I want it to be an inch away from the side of the box, I can make the box, the text frame stop, and then on my pages it will stop. Now notice 
the frame goes all the way to the left hand side of the page and so my left hand page options can go all the way to the left but my right hand page can't and so you need to make sure you do the same thing on the left hand side of the box I don't think that you'd probably want to do this you'd probably always snap it to the to the margins that's why you would set your margins you can even come in here and you can do object um, text frame options you can align to the bottom of the box and so now it'll align to the bottom outside corner of your pages. Okay, that wraps up this lecture. So please make sure you review everything that was covered in the lecture, and if you have any questions, contact your instructor.